Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Erin and today's video is going to be a Q&A about the Coast Guard Academy and about my life and my experiences here. In the future, I'd like to start doing Q&As through my Instagram, so if you're not already following me, go ahead and do that. My handle is right here. Uh, so that you can be involved and you can ask your questions and I can get to them in future videos. So with that, let's go ahead and jump right into the questions. So question number one, what is your favorite thing about the Coast Guard Academy? So I've talked about this so many times before, but my favorite thing is definitely the people. The relationships here that I've built uh, through the hardships, through the good times, all of the above are going to go with me for life since we're all joining the same service after we graduate. And so I'm thankful because even already now as a senior, I have friends in pretty much like every every state, from every state, uh, anywhere I go, I'm pretty much going to find somebody who's stationed there that I've either met before, worked with before, or that somebody I know has worked with before. And so the relationship piece, the networking connections, that's definitely my favorite part about the Coast Guard in general. And then my least favorite part about the Academy specifically would be all of the striving. And what I mean by that is when you take a bunch of the high performers, top performers from the country and put them in one school, there's gonna be a lot of hard work being done, but sometimes it can feel as though, like if you're not at running at the same pace as everybody else that you're falling behind when sometimes that might not be true. So when one person is stressing about a test that you might not be stressed about, it automatically like builds the tension and just makes you feel like you're behind or not doing enough or not good enough and so that's definitely a hard part about the academy and it's one of the reasons why you really have to find your identity in something else besides the work that you do because you might get straight A's in high school uh, 4.0 really good SAT score and then come here and then realize like compared to everybody else you might not be as good as you thought you were but you really have to focus on just doing the best that you can do and getting the support that you need and asking for help early um, to avoid that because your identity doesn't lay in your performance your identity I believe it lies in who God says I am uh, but you need to find that out for yourself and figure out someplace other than your performance uh, for where your identity lies all right next question is why not just go to regular college so this one was asked in the sense of like yeah the Coast Guard Academy is hard so why not just go somewhere that's not as hard and like avoid all of the like hardships yeah so this question is legit and i had uh, some civilian college options before coming here but i'd say that just like anything else in life you need the hard stuff in order to grow and so again based on the relationships that i've made the things that i've gone through like overcome it's totally worth it and there are so many other reasons uh like the fact that you don't pay for the coast guard academy like the fact that you have a guaranteed job when you graduate, like the fact that you will forever have the fact that you graduated from a military academy on your resume for any future jobs that you want to pursue. So there's so many reasons like that that trump any of the negative reasons and those reasons in itself are like enough to want to push through it and get to the end and make it worth it. So why not go to a regular college? One, all the benefits. Two, it's actually a lot of fun here and the hardships they come and they go but sorry you're gonna have them any place you go you're gonna have homesickness wherever you go you're gonna have to do your homework wherever you go you're gonna have to worry about life things such as finances and doing your laundry and feeding yourself like you're gonna have to worry about all those things wherever you go and so you might as well come to a school where everyone's doing it together and on the same team working towards the same goal and you have a guaranteed job so that's my plug all right, next question. Is there an exchange on base or what other resources do you have? So yes, we have a Coast Guard exchange on base where we can get any items that we need. There's like food items there, but also like uniform items, clothing items. Uh, so that's down the street. There's also like a Navy Federal there. So if we need to do any of our banking, we have that access on base. Uh, and then other resources, uh, we don't have as many like restaurant restaurants like I know Air Force and some of the other service academies do, but we do have a little cafe which is called dry dock cafe so they have nice breakfast sandwiches um burgers stuff like that there and we also just got a starbucks that's been a big deal in our new student center which is really awesome super thankful for that it's been awesome and uh, it's definitely enough for me we also have a cadet store in chase hall so in the barracks where we live that's open 24 7 so you can go down there 
get your Celsius, get your coffee, get your protein bars, all that stuff, notebooks, anything you might need any time of the day in Chase Hall. So you have lots of resources and yeah, I definitely don't find myself without. And we have the weekends off where we can go to like Target or anything we want too. So those are our resources on base. So what are the faith opportunities that I've taken advantage of? So most of you know, I'm involved in OCF, Officers Christian Fellowship, and it's a group that's military-wide that exists to support military members and point them to Christ and to serving others. That's what I'm involved with here. We also have the Focus Ministries and some other groups on base, um, an LDS group. Uh, so we have multiple avenues. The Coast Guard Chaplains are here as well as a resource for us. And then going into that, the next question is, what are the accommodations for non-Christians? And I kind of took this question as, like, you guys in my videos see me here at Shepherd's Fold all the time, which is the retreat center that I come to on the weekends. So if you're not a Christian or choose not to be involved in one of these groups, we have the sponsor family program at the academy. So when you come first as a fourth class, you're paired up with somebody in the community who has volunteered to be a sponsor family. And many of my friends like will go over to their houses on the weekends, eat meals with them, hang out with them. And so that's a resource if you're not involved in the community that I'm involved with here. Uh, other things I can think of is a lot of the faculty on base really like to support cadets outside of just a normal work day, so that's been a resource as well. Uh, and like I said, from the beginning, connections have been my favorite thing and they've gotten me through and there are so many people here that just want to build you up. It's incredible. Alrighty. Next question, what have you learned from the chiefs at the academy? So if you don't know, at the academy, we are split into eight different companies and each company has a company officer and a company chief. So those are like the adults running the company. And so they have had some time in the fleet out in the real life Coast Guard. A lot of them have served one, two, three tours for the officers and many more for the chiefs. And then they come back to the academy and serve as our mentors and our uh, leaders. They Each company has a collateral, so they're in charge of whatever the company needs to get done and monitoring everything that goes on, upholding the standards, uh, teaching us about leadership. And so one thing that has been really, really re-emphasized over and over to us from the Chiefs is to have humility when we graduate. So a lot of times I feel like ensigns get stuck in the rut where they just graduated, they were at the top of the school. I mean, I'm feeling that right now, right? But you're at the top of the school and then just like anything else, once you're at the top, then you're back at the bottom again. And so we really have to have humility when going into the fleet and realize that even though we're technically in charge of the chiefs and the rest of the enlisted members on board or part of the crew, we don't have as much experience as they do and we really need to ask questions and rely on them for support. That being said, I know it's not okay to just rely on the chiefs and rely on your enlisted. You have to be doing that hard work yourself to find answers to the questions that you have. And then if you're still stuck, then go ask the chief. So like, don't just expect them to teach everything to you, but go to them with the knowledge you've already looked for, tried to find, and then ask them for clarification and be working in tandem and communication with them moving forward. So that's probably the biggest lesson I've learned from the chiefs is to use them, have open communication with them, learn from them, have humility, but also have that work ethics so that you can be the leader for them that you're expected to be. Okay, next question. Let's see. What would you say to Suave Edwards? <clears throat> well, that is a funny question. And thanks for asking because I love the reflection piece of YouTube because I get to reflect all the time and it's awesome. But one thing I would say to Swab Edwards coming in is to go all in. And they say that all the time at the academy, like, we're all in, go all in. Um, but I'd say that because I feel like it's really easy to try to, to be two places at once when you leave for college. So you're trying to like maintain the relationships that you have at home and build new relationships here and you're kind of you're stuck in this push-pull between the two uh, and it's a good thing to maintain relationships for sure but you don't want to let those relationships prohibit you from 
being all in in that place that God has put you. So right now, God has put me at the academy and my job is to, to serve the people here, to learn as much as I can here, to take advantage of every opportunity I have. And so to Swab Edwards, I would say, like, be bold, go all in, uh, commit to commit to where God has placed you and trust that he's got a plan here and don't worry so much about what could have been, what you left behind, um, other options you had, like make a choice and then just go for it. That's what I would say to Swab Edwards because I think I struggled with homesickness a lot when I was a fourth class, mostly because I just, I was doing the what if game and should I have done this and like what if I didn't leave, like all these different things ran through my head but really like going all in is what would have saved me from a lot of the heartache that I felt and the, you know, hardships that I experienced. So I would say go all in and then just like I've mentioned, and I think I've done this over the time, over the years, but just focus on relationships, relationships with people, everyone you meet, ask them questions, get to know them, be so interested in who they are and because you can learn so much from different people who have all come to a new school from around the country. So it's, that's what I would say. That's Bob Edwards. Number eight. Is the academy basically college? Uh, yes. So I always, this question's always funny because yes, it's college. Definitely college because we earn a degree when we graduate. We have checked off the college box on all the resumes. I will have a degree in operations research and computer analysis when I graduate, similar to if I just went to another school. So yes, definitely college. But we also have a guaranteed five years of service in the Coast Guard when we graduate. And so in addition to that four-year degree, we are also working on having those basic skills, seamanship, so all the navigation classes that we have to take, leadership, and everything else that we need to be ready to enter into our job. And so, yes, basically college, but it's also paired with a lot of other things that normal college doesn't get paired with. So, it has the same benefits as normal college, plus some. Same workload as normal college, plus some. So. Yes, also everyone at the academy is required to do some sort of athletic activity, so whether that be a varsity sport, a club sport, or some sort of intramural, intercompany sport, we have to do that, which at a normal college I don't think you're required to, but again, some people might see these as downsides, but I think that, that encouragement and requirement is only a good thing. So yes, basically college and what you get out of it, um, as far as like the credentials to go into a new job. So after my five years in the Coast Guard, I will have on my resume that I have a f like operations research degree and I'll be able to go use that and search for a job just the same as I would going to a normal school. Question number nine. Where do you want to go after graduation? So when I came to the academy originally, I wanted to go to flight school. That's what I wanted to do all in. Uh, I grew up in a town that had a Coast Guard air station and so I got to see all the helicopters flying and doing search and rescue and all that. And so that's what I was really drawn to initially. I did not know so much about the boat side of the Coast Guard, which is a majority. Like that's what makes up the Coast Guard majority. So it's kind of funny that I didn't know that. But uh, so I came in wanting to fly. Um, and over time, as I've learned more about the career path and different options, I, I'm really not sure if I want to be in the Coast Guard more than my required five years just based on other interests that I have and different things that I want to do in life and um, family goals that I have and so the way it works when you go to flight school as far as commitment is it adds on another eight years so in addition to the five that you already have to pay back two of them will be knocked out uh, through going to flight school but then the other eight just get added on and so you're going to be in the Coast Guard if you go to flight school for at least 13 years after the year you graduate. So I wouldn't be able to get out of the Coast Guard until I was like 35, which right now at my five-year commitment, I'm not going to be able to get out until I'm 27. So I only made the decision not to go and apply for flight school because I'm not sure if I want to stay in until then. I want to keep the reserves option open and other things in life open and so I decided not to go to flight school and so I will be going to a boat. Um, there's another option right after you graduate which is called prevention so you're going and in inspecting vessels and so a few of my classmates probably around 
uh, nine of them will go to prevention, about 20 will go to fight school, and then the rest of us will go to boats. So I'm going to a boat somewhere, and I don't think I'm going to tell you where I want to go because I want it to be a surprise, so you'll have to come back in March and watch my Bill at Night video to find out where I end up. I think I'm just wanting to go to somewhere, somewhere new, so if that tells you anything, I want to go somewhere new. The last question is, and I get this one a lot, are you going to keep making videos after you graduate? So, first, I need to ask you guys, do you want me to keep making videos after I graduate? Because first I need to know that, so let me know in the comments if you want me to keep making videos. And then, if I do keep making videos, I'm going to be shifting a little bit more towards just personal videos, so vlog type videos, um, moving videos, because I'll be moving after graduation, some Bible studies, um, those type of videos, and really, if you want me to keep making videos after I graduate, the whole purpose would be so that I can continue to share the lessons I've learned from my college experience, and also just give you an opportunity to grow with me as I grow out of college and into my new job, and so I think it's a it's a really pivotal time of my life. It's going to be filled with a lot of hardships, but also fun things, but also lots of lessons. So if you are interested in following me after graduation, I'll tell you again, let me know in the comments down below. But then also, please subscribe to this channel right here because I'm going to be, like I said, doing a little more personal style videos. And so I'm going to switch over to this channel here so that I can leave all of my Coast Guard videos on channel that I'm talking to now and continue to post to this one about Coast Guard related things and this one about my personal things. So let me know, subscribe if you would like to, let me know in the comments what you would want to see post-graduation, if there's certain topics that you'd want me to talk about and that's all I have for this video. Go ahead and like and subscribe and follow me on Instagram and I'll see you next time. Bye guys.